Hey YouTube, Corpus San here and welcome to the 17th MapleStory Anniversary event, The Blooming Forest. This new event will help you level up your characters and will make them look good while doing so. I divided this video into two parts. First I'll be explaining how everything works and second we're looking at rewards and which ones are best to grab. Kicking things off with what you can actually do during this event. After reaching level 101, you'll get access to the event area through the star notifier. The wildflower spirit will explain some of the basics, but I'm deadly allergic to reading, so let's just fast forward that. Tap on the red butt to get a special skill after you're done talking to the spirit to get a new skill that is needed to cap coins. Yep, this is going to be one of those events. Every day you can get a total of 300 coins from defeating monsters around your level, completing mini games, or a little bit of both. The special skill that we just got will, when active, cause monsters to sometimes drop sunlight that has to be collected 10 times to make a flower bloom, and every time it blooms, boom, you get 20 coins. Every little sunlight is worth one coin as well. Just make sure you're defeating monsters around your level and some monsters in special areas like Shanghai usually don't drop anything event related. Also, if nothing is dropping, make sure to right click the skill. The skill is a little buggy at the time of this video and will sometimes have to be reactivated for it to work again. Wouldn't be Maple Story without at least having some bugs, huh? <laughs> Another way to get coins is to go to a special garden that can be accessed by going into the portal on the right. You can use various chairs here to either get EXP or coin. Chairs can be bought with mesos and the more expensive ones will farm coins faster. So if you don't feel like capping coins by defeating monsters or playing in minigames, just leave your character in this room to passively get your coins. It's like passive income. And I think the next part of this event is made especially for me. The Spirit of Harmony has another way for you to get coins and this event is based on your Legion level. Leveling all classes to level 200 finally was useful after all. This part of the event will reward coins as well and those don't count towards the daily limit of 300. But the amount of coins you can get is based on your Legion level. The higher your Legion, the more characters you can assign to this event. Every character will gain 1 coin per hour, so if you have 8000 or higher legion, you can assign 6 characters, so that's uh, 144 additional coins per every 24 hours. Well, if your legion is 2000 or below, you'll only get 24 additional coins per 24 hours. Just keep in mind that you will first need to cap 300 daily coins before you can claim the coins from this part of the event. The coins will collect for up to 24 hours and will not accumulate after that until they're claimed, so claim them on time for the most gains. Like with most events, there also is a punch machine style event where you have to deal as much damage to a monster within the time limit. The more damage you deal, the higher your score will be, and every week this score will be reset on Wednesdays. The points that you'll get from this event can be used to purchase special level of potions in the store that can be accessed by just talking to the same NPC that you need to talk to to start the punch king machine to begin with. Looks like it will be time for me to finally get to level 250 with the help from this event. I just saw a level of potion, I'm gonna get that. Just remember, you first have to hit your daily coin cap of 300 before you can participate. Another way to get coins needed for the event stores is by participating in an event race. This race is available at the 15 and 45 minute mark of every hour. Complete the race to get blooming coins that will count towards your daily limit. And once you hit your daily limit you can still participate if you do like it that much, but you won't get any more rewards. The race is quite long so I won't include the full race, but it's really fun to participate in if you're in the game. And finally, at every 30 minute mark, you'll be able to get a special buff if you enter the event map. The type of buff given depends on if it's an alt or even hour. You'll either get a 15% bonus EXP buff or a buff that will give 15 all stats, attack and magic attack, 15% defense ignored, 15% boss damage and 1500 HP and MP. A great buff to pick up if you just want to start bossing. Defeating weekly bosses during this event is also a must. All weekly bosses will drop a special event currency that, that can be used to purchase special rewards. Those coins can only be claimed once per boss and you'll be able to get up to 400 per week. The coins are shared within the world though. Keep in mind you can also coin cap on multiple characters to purchase rewards from the stores on different characters. And speaking of rewards, let's check out why we're slaving away at the coin cap this time around. Starting with the stat boost and coin capping rewards before we check out the stores and what you can get from them. Three times per week you'll be able to make a flower bloom by giving them sunlight, aka when you cap 300 coins for the day. Every time you give sunlight you'll unlock a reward and a skill point. The rewards are a ton of level up potions. You can get 36 leveling potions from this event. These potions can be used between level 141 and level 199 and will reward a random amount of levels. They can be traded within the world through the storage as well. 
for every flower that blooms you'll get a skill point and for every third flower that blooms you'll get three skill points which makes for a total of five skill points per week and 30 skill points that can be obtained during the entire event. All your characters who are participating in this event will be able to get the buffs that you can get from this event as they're shared within the world as long as they have the event active. You cannot reset your skill points though so spend them wisely. Unlocking a skill costs one point, getting it to level two costs two and getting one skill to level three will cost you three points. So in total you need six points to get a skill to level three but we do only get five per week. I'm going to spend them a little bit everywhere for the first few weeks until I have enough points to get a few of them to level three. For example on my account that I'm building Legion on in the first week I'll get the EXP buff to level two and I get one point in normal monster damage and one point in crit rate. The week after I'll get EXP to level three and normal monster damage to level two. If your goal is leveling up mules prioritize putting points in EXP and crit rate if you don't have max crit rate yet and normal monster damage. If your goal is bossing focus on defense ignored, boss damage and buff duration or crit rate depending on what you need. Bonus EXP is always useful unless you really don't want to grind. I usually never put points in all stats or max HP MP. If you get 5 points per week you can max out 5 skills and I'm probably gonna go with bonus EXP, normal monster damage, crit rate, boss damage and defense ignored. The first order we check out is the one where you can spend your coins that you get from defeating weekly bosses. If you're on a reboot I recommend either getting the flames if you're just starting out or if you're preparing your Arcane gear then go get the droplets. I usually don't go for the circulators because we can buy an infinite amount of those with mesos and the 50% off inner ability reset is happening quite a lot on sunny Sundays. In the regular server you can purchase bonus potential cubes in this store. I would get all 15 of those. Those are really hard to get as a free to play player. The karma premium scrolls for accessories are also pretty amazing to get and the same goes for the pet ones if you have a pet with permanent equipment. I would recommend spending all leftover coins on just flames. The communal store has items for sale whose limits are shared within the world so do keep that in mind. In this store you can get up to 30 more level up potions similar to the ones I talked about earlier. Really nice for leveling legion and link skills. You'll be able to get 66 of those potions during the entire event that's pretty crazy. Looking at the store and reboot I would definitely go for the experience node stones or just node stones in general as well as for monster bloom if you're working on monster collection. The potential stamp is nice to get as well if you're running low on those. You can get epic potential scrolls from the legion store. Storage slots and character slots can be bought with messes in reboot so I wouldn't get those if you're playing on reboot. Same goes for the karma cubes. The flames are okay to get if you need them. The same goes for the regular service store just go for the node stones first but there I would also go for the special bonus potential scroll and golden hammer 100% if you have some gear that doesn't have bonus potential yet or you still have some hammer slots left. The unique karma scroll has a lot more value in the regular server if you're a free to play player so getting one of those could be interesting for you as well. In a reboot I just wouldn't go for that. Just farm mesos, buy cash up queues and just get your items to unique that way. You can save your coin for something else. The personal store is also super interesting for Maplers looking to boost their damage and their fashion game. All items in the store can be bought on multiple characters. That's why it's interesting to cap on different characters if you for example have a bossing mule or are working on a new main. There are two rings which I consider must haves. That are the Chaos Ring. This ring has high stats and the potential can be reset for free up until unique. This will save you a lot of messes in reboot and is super nice to have in a regular server. The other one is the Adventure Deep Dark Critical Ring. This ring cannot get potential but passively increases critical rate and critical damage. And 5% critical damage is a lot of stats. So it's like 20% worth of stats just from the critical damage alone. The Master Ring Double S is nice to get as well. The Synergy Ring is okay if you're looking to boost a lot of Muse but has slightly worse stats than the other three rings I just mentioned. The Cosmos and Vengeful rings are a lot cheaper so if you cannot get enough coins those rings are still okay to get but if you can go for the Chaos ring and the Dark Critical ring first. I'm going for the Critical ring first for my new main on my fresh account because I really need the crit rate and the crit damage is super nice as well. For the growth part of the store I always go for the trade boost potions to get charm to level 30 and more ignore enemy defense by upping up my ambition and I always buy out all the symbols because less dailies just make my life just slightly better. I wouldn't get much else from this part of the store though. Perhaps some special medal of honors if I have coins left towards the end of the event. The decoration store also has various fun outfits, damage skins and other items. You can of course get whatever you like. If you are on reboot and you don't have an android yet I do recommend getting the wildflower spirit droid coupon because the tree spirit sells a 2 billion heart in the meso store which is the best heart in slot you can get in reboot unless one droid comes around. So I would recommend getting that one if you don't have an android and permanent heart yet. I don't think the flames are worth it in the meso store though for this price and if you're in a regular server the heart is also okay but I'm pretty sure there are better hearts available in the auction house. 
And I already mentioned the final store, the level potion store from the Punch King machine. This one is very dependent on how strong you are and how many points you can get. I'm going for that 7k point potion so I can finally get to level 250. And that's basically the entire event. More mini games will be coming later in May. And I hope this video was useful. Make sure to leave a like if it was. It really helps also for my channel. I hope everyone will have fun with the event. And as always, many thanks to our members making these videos possible. Thanks to Niels de Konek, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Riley Oz, Terry Kim, Varese, Kaudi Mora, Wiley, History Cannon, Backspace OTI, Safrolex, Anwar NHI, Ziggy Deer, Flidiot, Knife Suit, Chen125, Cloudfix, Gusus Rodriguez, Froggy, Vyra, Trevor, Michael Machaka, Ratius, Justin Vale, Silvio Nato, Stevie Zhang, Afterlord and a Score MS, Seamark, Striker Elk, Tide One Pun, Victor Sundstrom, Radicals the Alien, Riser Ryu, Gummy Bullet, Lovebird, Sertito655, Matthias Simonson, Mr. Anark, Galando Belavia, my name is Corpersan and I'm super cute XOXO, PC Game Life, Dante Victory, Stani Slask, Sumo Vegas, Level 243 Paladin Reboot, The Passenger, Martin Panzik, and Disappointed, Lucky Beats, Gabriel Eck and Pedro Benedetti. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe and happy Mabling!